Hello everyone, welcome back to another edition of the Velvet Lounge Life. Um, today, yes, we are, as you can see, we are going to discuss buttons. And some of my favorite buttons are black glass, French jet, antique morning buttons. Anything to do with a black button, I'm pretty much there if it has some decoration on it. So we are going to definitely really get into what these types of buttons are, just show you some from my own collection. I have at least, I'm going to say, two and a half more trays of buttons like this, but I'm showing you these in particular. I actually went, pick, I picked and chose what I would show in this video. Um, because otherwise we'd be here for many, many hours looking at these. But these are some of my absolute favorites um, for several reasons. One reason is because of size. Some I love because of the shape, others because they were gifts to me from people. Um, and I love the button itself, not just because it was a gift, but because of like either its shape, design, something else about it. Also some I just adore because of the designs that are on them. And of course, they're black, glass, super shiny, well-made, beautiful buttons. So... One of the things that I want to cover immediately is what is the difference between jet and French jet? And the reason I want to cover that is because in other videos, when someone finds a button, especially if they're from a foreign country, they tend to identify the button as immediately as being jet. Jet is actually a soft it's a softer material. It's basically charcoal is really what it is. And it's surprisingly super incredibly light weight, unlike glass, which definitely will have more weight to it. Even if it's a small glass button compared to a jet button, you will be able to tell the difference because a glass button will definitely weigh slightly more. Um, jet glass, like I said, um, is something that is glass, whereas jet is a fossilized wood. So it's sort of what we in the United States and other countries call coal or charcoal. But what's happened is that coal or charcoal is so hard, you can actually carve and shape things from it. So um, the last thing is jet usually takes on a softer sheen or glow after it's polished, whereas jet glass is just super incredibly shiny, almost mirror-like. As a matter of, actually, look at this button right here. I will point it out, this one. That's definitely super incredibly shiny. Whereas jet, I mean, it's not glass. That's why it's not going to have that high polish or sheen to it. And of course, here in the United States, we mostly obviously have Victorian glass buttons that we look for that are hopefully beautiful, carved, molded, you know, they're used for everyday wear, or they're also used in mourning, which actually is something that follows um, Queen Victoria's era where she made it okay to be fashionable and to have pretty things, even when you're in mourning and remembering those that you love. So sometimes they're called mourning brooches which, or mourning buttons, which is M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. Um, and I mean, otherwise, not to be funny, but we wear them every day. So at this point in history, like, this sounds terrible, but people can wear jeans and a t-shirt to a funeral service, which I would not ever, ever recommend, but do what you must do if that's how you will get yourself through that process. 
but as far as you know wearing a specific piece of jewelry or a specific button like unfortunately that era is out unless we that like fashion regardless of the era we don't want to live in those times we just like certain styles or fashion from those times then you could still take any of these and turn them into family heirlooms and use them for such occasion, whether it's joyous or maybe something that's a little more somber. So just something to remember because some people are like, oh my God, that's so gruesome or it's so macabre. No, it's not. It's part of life. And unfortunately, um, we today just you know, sometimes don't appreciate these things or don't appreciate the ceremony behind them as, you know, other people did previously. So let's get into these buttons and what they are and, you know, in some cases just why I have them and why I like them. So I'm going to start out with buttons that I've had ever since I was, I'm going to say I maybe was 12, 13 when I acquired these buttons. Um, I, I don't know if these buttons are still out in the world right now. I know that I actually had these on a card for a long, 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 long time. And I'm talking decades, you guys, until the card just fell apart more and more every single year. <laughs> and I finally just took them off the card and put them in this tray. Oh, something else really quick. People ask me all the time, you know, how do you store or display your buttons? Well, as you know, I display charm strings. So I don't really display individual buttons unless someone sends me a card of buttons that they created themselves. Then those actually are hanging up around my little studio here. And I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five, six of them right now that are hanging up just to, you know, decorate, plus it adds inspiration, whatever. But as far as, you know, me acquiring buttons, I don't really like put them on those cardboard backings or anything like that. I just keep them in trays just like this. And these are actually Ferrero Rocher trays. And they come in, like, as far as I know, two different, maybe three different sizes. I only have two different sizes. They're made of this hard plastic. And they come with this insert for the candies. And they come with a lid, which is made of the same hard plastic. What I do, of course, as you can see, is I separate my buttons out. Then what I do is I cut a piece of large bubble, bubble wrap to fit the inside of the lid. And then what I do is I cover the buttons with this entire thing, close it up. That was upside down. Um, close it up and use the little tabs on the side to hold it in place. And what this does is if the buttons shift around or if I move the tray, when this lid is completely on it, the bit large bubble bubble wrap keeps it in place. Now, something you do need to know is you will not want to store them long term with plastic over the top. If someone finds these, let's say in 20 years or so, this plastic may have deteriorated and may have even attached itself a little bit to these buttons. So something you should do is actually put acid free paper on top of this and then put your um, bubble wrap and then put your lid. That's really the way that you should do it. And I am actually going to be doing that when I get the time to do it. So let's look at the buttons. So I have buttons um, in here because like I said, they're buttons that I simply like more than the other buttons that I have. Even though there's probably like another 15 or so I could have added to this, but at some point you have to have a limit. Um, one of the first buttons I'm going to point out because I think it's really incredibly special and just the architecture of this button is amazing. Tell if, First of all, can you guess which one I am going to pick? Guess. And I know you can't see every button in here because there's some on the perimeter. I just couldn't get into the picture. 
I'm going to pick this button, this one that's like right in the center. The reason why is because this is a triple material um, Victorian button. It would be so expensive to create this button nowadays. It would be insane. Um, what makes this button incredibly special is simply what I just said. It is actually made from three different materials. And not only is it made from three different materials, it's just the time, the effort, the way that they created and constructed this is so amazing. So what you see are six rhinestones in the center. And these rhinestones are not glued in. They didn't let the glass get hot and press them in. They actually are sitting each in their own little cradle and they're, they use um, crimpers to take the little prongs, so it's prong set, and to crimp them into place. And they've been in place like this for, oh my God, decades upon decades. And then what you see, of course, another material is around the edge is our beautiful black glass. And it's also faceted, which is awesome and amazing. And then what you see is this beautiful frame that this button is placed into. And then on the back, you can see where the shank is right there in the center and I will remove this. And then what you see are these little prongs, not prongs, but little pins on the left and right side of the shank. Those pins are pushed through from the front. So there's a brass pin. You could see it right there, right in the center, right there. There's one on the left and the right side that's pushed all the way through. And then what they did is they bent that pin to the left and right side to hold it in place. And this has been held in place for probably, I'm going to say well over a hundred years or about a hundred years. This would be such an expensive button to make now. I mean, you could have them made, but it would definitely be um, something that's commissioned and would be a one of a kind, like you, they wouldn't necessarily have a high production unless you were willing to pay for that. But this, just because of how it's made, the time, the effort, knowing that someone had to sit there and press those two little, you know, pro or pins down, I just adore this button. I have so much respect for it and for what it, you know, how it's made. It's a piece of jewelry. I mean, basically, if you look at any of the, these, they're sort of like pieces of jewelry on their own. So I do have some Czechoslovakian buttons in here. I know there are people, I don't know why. So if you guys could please tell me in the comments, any answer is just make it respectful and it's okay for people to have differing opinions than you just because you don't agree with them doesn't mean that you should come back and have some long tirade as to why they're wrong they're not necessarily wrong they just don't agree with you but if you could please tell me um you know why there's a bit of a disdain for Czechoslovakian buttons I would greatly appreciate that I've heard that from like I'm going to say five or six Actually, if I include my YouTube, uh, not YouTube, my Facebook people, I'm going to say it's probably almost 10 people, maybe even closer to a dozen, who are like, yeah, I really don't like the Czechoslovakian buttons. I don't know why. Maybe because there's so many out in the market. Maybe it's also because sometimes it is harder to tell which are the older versus the newer. I don't know. That's why I'm asking. I personally... I, I like some Czechoslovakian buttons, as you'll see, and then there are others that, you know, they don't do anything for me, but in any type of button style, that's how I feel anyway. So it's not really down to one particular region or maker or country or anything like that. It's For me, it's like, I don't like the color, or and not that I don't like it, it's not a color that I'm into, or the style isn't something I'm into, or it's not fancy enough or it's I don't know whatever um, but if you could just tell me what your opinions are I really really want to know and 
like I said, unless you're being disrespectful, there are zero wrong answers. Um, I just want to know and learn more. Another button that I like a lot and um, was a gift to me. And so I am going to dedicate this video to a couple people. One of them is Susie um, and it is this button or 80 Sunshine is where you'll find her here on YouTube. And this button, I know she was looking for in my favorites um, video, but this button I thought was just so like detailed that it deserved its own, it, it deserved to be here at home with the other black buttons, you know, versus me showing it in my other video of favorites. But one of the reasons that this is a favorite of mine is the moose, I believe, is bending down to drink out of a river. And he has his little butt up in the air. He has his little tail. And it's a he because it's a full rack, which is on the male. And there's even a little landscaping around it. And of course, this texture is amazing. So, and it has a self shank nice thick old one and I just so I can see this being on a men's hunting jacket or a men's like smoking jacket you know he's just relaxing in the lounge maybe smoking a cigar having a snifter of brandy or whiskey or such or maybe even just knocking back a beer in an actual mug versus a bottle. We're going back in time here, people. And so I, this button, you know, I could just hear like an entire story around it. So that, that is a button I really adore and thank her so much for sending it to me. And I hope that she's surprised if she's watching this video or she still follows, hopefully, um, to see that. I did not forget that button. I love that button. Super cool. Something I will talk about very briefly is how I clean my buttons and how often. How often? Rarely. Only if needed. How do I clean them? A textured button like this. And yes, this is the finger that went through our hedge trimmer people. So forgive me for showing my ugly finger. But, and yes, I've been doing gardening, so yeah, 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 we won't even get into that. It's fun, though. But for a button like this, because of the texture of this button, what I would do, and this is how I actually clean them, and this one I have not cleaned yet, is I use a soft bristle child's toothbrush. You can use even, I have one that has the batteries in it, those, they could, like, people falsely call them electric toothbrushes. They're not. Ask your dentist. But what I do like about those, it's great for cleaning, that little vibrating movement. Use a child's version because you don't want, and plus you want a soft bristle because you're not trying to break your buttons or damage them. And use a tiny drop of Dawn dishwashing liquid that you diluted in warm water and go at it for a couple of minutes. After a couple minutes, it should be clean. You might have to like rinse it and clean it once more if it's super dirty. Then you will simply take your warm water and take your button and just rinse it off. Then just leave it to the side to, I pat it dry and then I let them air dry. What I do with my buttons that are super shiny, like, this actually, well, here's a lot of shiny buttons in here. And this has a, like, this decoration is completely encased in glass. So you want to make sure of that. Like these that have paint on them, I would use that same soft toothbrush method. But those that are just basically pure glass or the decoration is completely sealed, I simply spray a spray or two of Windex on a cotton or a dust-free type um, paper towel. And I mean, I'm trying not to use a name. I use Bounty. Bam, there you go. And then I just give them a wipe and they should come clean easily. Wipe the, ins out the fronts and as well as the back. 
If there's stuff stuck in the shank, just use a sewing needle to push it out. And then you can kind of like clean the best that you can in that. Then you just take and use a spray of water on a clean cloth. Wipe it off to make sure you get the window cleaner off. Let them dry. You are done. After that, it depends on what you're doing. You probably will never have to clean these again. And like I said, I'll just repeat a little bit. Those with like this has a carved in decorative element as well as it's painted. You don't want to use anything harsh on anything like that. Soft toothbrush method, maybe just use water. But Dawn is super incredibly gentle if you just use a, and I do mean a drop of it. So, you know, the big squeeze, don't do that. Way too much. They use Dawn to clean animals that are damaged by human oil spills so and gasoline and other things so that tells you how gentle it can be as long as you don't overdo it and then you'll end up with a tray of buttons that look like this and how many times do I clean them I know this is a repeat but I have to say it because someone will ask me again usually only once sometimes I never have to clean them and then my last tip will be for a button like this that has rhinestones in it and it's prong set and so you're dealing with like and then of course you have the brass that it sits into you only want to use a little bit of window cleaner then you want to make sure that you wipe it off really well and don't use any water on it if you see a rainbow hue, that means that you used way, way, way too much window cleaner. And when I'm talking about using these things, you guys, it's like a spritz. It's very little. And then you want to dry it off really, really well and go back and dry it off again just to make sure that, you know, nothing is in between these prongs and you never spray the button directly. You only spray your cloth regardless of how you clean. So... That, that's a question that I get pretty often as well. So I hope that that helps you guys. So another button that I love a lot <laughs> talking about it is this beautiful paisley button. This is probably from maybe the 70s. And this is a Czechoslovakian button. Um, Czechoslovakian buttons are incredibly well made always you know I think it's about like for the Czechoslovakian buttons what is your style like and some people don't collect glass so that's another thing but what I love about this look at all of those colors that are mixed in there and how thick this button is it's self shanked nice thick shank on it as well as I mean they really took the decoration out to the edge like buttons that are not made as well will mostly be just decorated a little bit, just a little in the center and usually a single color. And it won't be like, this is about the size of a nickel, this button. So, you know, pretty hefty button and you saw how thick it is. But my thing with that, the paisley and the colors. And here I have some other multicolored buttons. Here I have, these are also Czechoslovakian. Yeah, I'm trying to get those out of the way for you guys. These, um, to me, are absolutely stunning. Um, just look at the decoration. And this has a silver, like, wash highlight over it so that the silver sits on top of the, the button. And then you have the black down in the crevices of it so you can definitely see the variation in colors. Um, actually, apologies, this one is made by La Mode. I thought that I had, uh, I did not put it in here. I have another one that's similar to this that is Czechoslovakian. Like I said, I have another like maybe two and a half trays of these buttons, different buttons, and some of them are a little similar. This one is by La Mode, um, and it, this is a newer button. I think I I want to say this and even the other that I have that's similar because I always remember thinking that these were the same buttons and they're not. 
they're just made similarly, which is a lesson within itself is that button makers will copy each other. I talked about that in other videos, like much earlier in my button series, is that you guys should know that, like for example, um, the cult buttons, is a, that's a good example. There are lots of variations that look like cult buttons, but they're not cult buttons. And it's not just them, there's others that were also copied. So let's look at some charm string buttons. So here we have, and the reason they're called charm strings is simply because of the way the shank is, and they look as if they could hang off of a bracelet like it's a piece of jewelry. I have different styles of these black glass charm string buttons, um, different makers, different finishes, etc. I do adore these buttons because if you are working on different projects, they are so easy to work with just because of the shank. Another thing to know about um, black glass buttons, if they have the brass finding on the back, those are usually the older buttons. And what they did is they would create the button in a mold usually, and then that button would come out while it was super hot go through a production line where the shank was pressed into the hot glass. Then the glass, the um, button cooled before they added any additional decoration to it. And sometimes the decoration, like this one, was applying other glass to the top. So this one has these very high raised glass balls on it. And those would have been applied afterwards so they could reheat the glass and press in anything they wanted. And then after it was fully cooled, they could go ahead and paint it. Or, you know, maybe it was finished at that point. But, yeah, I love those buttons. Um, I have several of them. Um, this is a newer one that I purchased. And this one is featured in a, but in a button video that I did recently, so you will have to watch that video to find out more about that button. Now let's go over to this button. The, I have several of these, and I just put a few of them here in the tray. I've had these for a very, very long time. These um, buttons are, the design is completely encased in glass. They have this beautiful edge to them. Once again, amazing beveling. And inside, there's this foil-created flower. It's like pressed down there into the glass. And then on the back, it once again has a very nice shank on it. And obviously, buttons like this, hard to find. I've had these for a ridiculous amount of time, so long that the card they were on eventually just fell apart and I had to take them off of the card. And here they retire into this tray. So what I'm going to do is a part two video and talk more about some of the um, black glass buttons that I have and give you some more history on them. So thank you for tuning in for this particular video and hopefully you learned more about cleaning the, the buttons, an easy way to store them, as well as, you know, how they're made. But if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't enjoy it, it's okay to give it a thumbs down. Just, you know, leave a comment. Let me know why. And also, please subscribe and share our videos. I would greatly appreciate that. Remember that your health is your wealth. And without your health, you have absolutely nothing so please, please, please take care of yourselves and be well.